So for this lesson we're going to continue to work with right angle trigonometry. So this is review concepts in trigonometry, but we're going to be looking at them in the context of word problems. One of the problems that students run into with word problems is the actual wording, the terminology that's used. So one of the common things you're going to see is references to angle of elevation and angle of depression. Sometimes that's called an angle of inclination or declination. The way that you should be thinking about these things is that you imagine the horizontal, whether that's the ground or just someone who is looking straight out, straight towards the horizon. And then the angle of elevation is an angle that is measured above that horizontal line. And the angle of depression is an angle that is measured below that horizontal line. Another fairly common type of word problem involves uh, ships or boats or aircraft uh, at varying locations with respect to each other, or you might have some sort of uh, description based on a map. And then so in those cases, we might be dealing with compass directions and bearings. Technically, either of these two types of descriptions could be there in the problem you're more typically going to see a compass direction in a geography type situation. So something referring to or based off of a map. A bearing is more likely to be in a naval or aviation situation where you have some sort of vessel referring to either another vessel or its own movement. So let's start off with questions. Now I'm not, I gave those first two pages um, more as a warning of some questions you might see. I'm not focusing on those in particular. There's a third thing that I really want to focus on in this lesson, which is actually the importance of diagrams. So actually doing the trigonometry here should become relatively simple once you've figured out what the situation describes and the diagrams that are going to help you describe that. So we start off here with two roads intersecting at a 90 degree angle. At 9 a.m. two cars leave the intersection on different roads at speeds of 80 kilometers per hour and 100 kilometers per hour. So here is the intersection One car leaves there at 80 kilometers per hour. One car leaves there at 100 kilometers per hour. So these cars are going to travel along these roads and they're going to end up at some final position. So I'm just going to call this A and I'm going to call this B. These two roads are at a 90 degree angle. Now if you think about this, what I've drawn here is I'm looking down. So this is the view from above. Because I'm looking down onto this intersection and I'm seeing this car drive away and this car drive away. From 9 o'clock to 9.15 well, that's 15 minutes, but the question actually has the speeds of the cars are given in kilometers per hour. So we actually want to rewrite our 15 minutes as 15 over 60 hours. And that's the same as either you can think of that as a quarter hour or you could think of that as 0.25 hours. I'm, I generally prefer fractions, but of course in this case this is a non-repeating decimal, so 0.25 hours is perfectly good. So the distance that car A travels is going to be the speed of car A, just to remind you, D is equal to V times T. So the distance that car A travels is going to be 80 times a quarter, essentially. And one quarter of 80 is equal to 20. 
then we have the distance that car B travels is going to be equal to 100 times 1 quarter and that's going to be equal to 25. Now from here and this is maybe the first really important part of the lesson or the, the first important part of this problem is don't be shy or afraid or reluctant to redraw diagrams. So I'm going to do that again but this time I'm just going to make a triangle. So I'm not trying so hard here to illustrate what's happening in this situation. Here is point A, here is the intersection, here is point B. The distance from the intersection to point A is 20 kilometers. The distance from the intersection to point B is 25 kilometers. So what can I find using this information? Well, I have these two sides. So I have this side and I have this side, which means I could find this side using the Pythagorean theorem. I could find this angle using trigonometry. I could find this angle using trigonometry. So while you're doing this, it's just as important for you to recognize what the information you have is going to do with regards to helping you solve the problem. Now we have an even looked at what the problem itself is. I jumped straight into the initial situation. So I dealt with not even the first sentence. I only covered, sorry, I did the first couple of sentences and then at 9.15 a traffic helicopter is directly above the slower car at a height of 1500 meters. So 9.15, there's our 15 minutes a helicopter is directly above the slower car at a height of 1500 meters. So what does that look like? Well first of all above the slower car which one is the slower car? That would be A. So this one is slow which means the helicopter would be right there. It would be above the point A. But since this triangle which is based off of this diagram is looking down that doesn't actually help us represent things very much. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine looking at this from the side. And in particular, the side I'm going to look at is from here, from the side AB. So imagine now that you are, here's a, something we do in physics, we, we draw an eyeball here. So imagine you are the observer looking from over here. Well, what would you see? You would see, if you were standing here, then over to your left would be the car A, and over to your right would be car B, and then hovering above car A, there would be a helicopter. And if the person in that helicopter looked out and down, well, first of all, if they looked over to car B, they would be looking along that line. And now we bring in something that I mentioned at the beginning of the lesson, which is the angle from the horizontal down to this line that they look across. I'm going to call that angle theta. This would be an angle of depression. Now the question wants to know, determine the angle of depression and the distance from the helicopter to the faster car. So what I'm trying to find is this angle of depression and I'm trying to find this distance, the length of this side. So these are the things that I want. What other pieces of information do we have? Do we know the length of side AB? No, we do not. Do we know the, the length of side AH? That's actually the height. That's 1,500 meters. But I'm going to want to represent that as kilometers because everything else I have so far is in kilometers per hour or kilometers. And the last thing that I want to point out to you 
is that if I was in the helicopter, this line, this dotted line, would be a horizontal line, just in the same way that the ground is a horizontal line. So what we have here are two horizontal lines, and they are cut by this line from H to B. That means this angle theta is the same as this angle theta, which is contained inside the triangle. The helicopter is directly above the car A, so this is a right angle triangle. So that means we're going to be able to use right angle trigonometry. But we can't do that yet because the only piece of information that we currently have for this triangle is one side. And that's not enough. So what we're going to do is we are going to use our first triangle to give us an additional piece of information that we can use in the second triangle. What is that piece of information? It's the length of the side AB. So the length of the side AB, all squared, must be equal to 20 squared plus 25 squared. That's the Pythagorean theorem. AB, all squared, must be equal to 400 plus 625. So that means that AB must be equal to the plus or minus square root of 1025. But of course, AB is a length, so that means it can't be 0. So AB must be greater than 0. So we end up with AB is equal to the square root of 1025. Now, I don't care about AB as an answer. I only care about AB as a value that I can use in this triangle. So now I found that, 1, 0, 2, 5. But that means I'm going to leave it in this exact form. There's no point in coming up with a rounded answer to this because I'm not going to report this as part of my concluding statement. So let's go over here now. And you know what? This diagram is pretty cluttered. So once again, I would really encourage you to draw as many diagrams as you need. Now we have the helicopter A, B. We have the angle theta, which we want. We have the square root of 1025, we have 1 1.5, and we have this distance d. I could have labeled this as the letter a if I wanted to as well, but I've, I've, used, I've used the letter d and the angle theta there. So now let's take a look at the angle theta, and how do we label the sides? Well, across from a would be the hypotenuse, across from theta would be the opposite side and then beside theta would be the adjacent side. So from a right angle trigonometry point of view we're trying to find the angle theta so that means we need to either use sine or cosine or tangents. We have the opposite side, we have the adjacent side, and we're trying to find the hypotenuse. And so from the equations that I have here, the only one that I can start with, because it has two knowns and one unknown, is tangent. So from there, I can write that the tangent of theta is equal to, and it's going to be 1.5 opposite over adjacent over the square root of 1025. And so that means that theta itself is equal to the inverse tangent of 1.5 over the square root of 1025. And I end up with theta is approximately equal to, so I'm going to do 1.5 divided by the square root of 1025. And then I'm going to take the inverse tangent of that answer and I end up with a final answer of 2.6825, 2.6825 degrees. And this is one of my answers that I'm going to want. So I'm actually also going to just round this to one decimal will be fine. And that's what I'm going to report in my final answer. For side length D, I could use trigonometry again, or I could just go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem d squared 
equals, and now I'll write it out, 1025 square root of, but I'm going to square that, plus 1.5 squared. You see how important it was that we got the units right here, because if we had left the 1500 meters, that would result in something that's going to affect our answer in a very inappropriate way. So d squared is equal to 1025. Squaring and square rooting are inverses of each other, so now I just get back the value 1025. 1.5 squared is actually quite small. It is 2.25. So I end up with d is equal to the square root of 1027.5. And the reason I didn't put plus or minus is because I know that a distance is positive. I want this as an approximate value, and this is the last thing I need to do. So all I really need to do is calculate this and get my final answer. And I'm going to round it in this first step. So I end up with 32.1. Therefore, the distance... is 32.1 kilometers at an angle of 2.7 degrees and it's pretty obvious that this is an angle of depression but another way that we sometimes write this below the horizontal I like to show many different ways to express the same thing and that's both so you have some choice in how you answer but it's also to prepare you for the different ways that questions might be asked. As you can see these things take a while so I've got one more that I'm going to do here. Now with this one I'm going to do the more adventurous thing. I'm going to read the entire question and then I'm going to do my best. I'm going to stretch my artistic ability and see if I can come up with a 3D version of this. And then from there, we're going to create our 2D triangles. It's really very important for you to do, in cases like this, uh, multiple 2D triangle diagrams for when you're actually doing your math. But let's see what we can piece together with my fairly mediocre artistic talent. Two people are standing on a bridge that is 30 meters high. The bridge itself is 30 meters high. They are standing 75 meters apart on the bridge. One person looks straight out from the bridge and sees a boat. So presumably this bridge is over water. And they measure an angle of depression of 16 degrees. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what I can do. Here is the surface of the bridge. This is where the people are standing. So that means that the the base of the bridge, which I'll do is kind of pillars, that would look like this. Since a person looks out over water, I'm going to say that this bridge is over a river. Okay, so there's our not a terrible representation of a bridge. Okay, on this bridge, there is a person, uh, let's see, move them over a little bit. There's a person standing here, 75 meters away, there's another person standing on the bridge. The distance between these two people along the bridge is 75 meters. The bridge itself is 30 meters high. In the water there is a boat. There now this is this gets really difficult to actually show. So I'm going to draw a line straight down from that person to the water and then straight out from that person along the water is a boat. Okay, I don't know why I'm caring so much about the detail here, but there we go. There's the boat. The person on the bridge, 
and this is you can hopefully you can appreciate why this is actually not the best way to do this the person on the bridge is looking out so there is a horizontal line I don't think I need an arrow on the end of that and the person on the bridge looks down at the boat like this and it says they look down at an angle of 16 degrees now things get really tough because we run into perspective problems so this person let's go to one last color this person also looks down at the boat and the question we're trying to figure out is what is the angle that they have to look down at so that took me a fair amount of time I apologize that you actually had to watch me do that all in all I'm actually quite pleased with that diagram but that diagram it might help you in looking at this maybe this helps you as a student understanding the situation but from a solving perspective this is not helpful what is helpful is to look at the various configurations here and particularly since this is trigonometry to look at the various triangles involved uh, let's also label some of our our pieces here so since I've done this diagram I'm going to label the first person P I'm going to label the first the second person Q I'm going to label the boat B should I label the boat B sure and I'm going to label the base of the bridge A just because I'm I'm missing uh, let's see I maybe I need to label underneath the second person as well so let's I'm just going to put a label on there in case we need it that's C okay now let's look at what does the view from above look like so imagine that we were in a balloon or a helicopter and we were way above this whole situation so from above we would have the person at P and we would be able to see so we'd be looking at the tops of their heads then we'd be able to see the person at Q and we would see that there are 75 meters between them and directly out from the person at P there would be the boat and the person from P is looking is at looking at a 90 degree angle to the bridge at the boat now because this is from above we can't see that this line PB is actually a line along an angle of depression but that doesn't matter so this is the information that we have for this and I think that's it um, 75 meters apart bridge is 30 meters high 16 degrees so there's no other information to go along with that diagram all right what else could we look at we could look at from the side and I have to specify which side so uh, I'm going to well I guess when I draw the the triangle you'll see it what about from this side so what if a person was looking this way so then they would see the base of the bridge the point A and this would be at the water level so the boat would also be at the water level and then above the point A is the person P and they're looking down at the boat they're looking down at the boat with an angle of depression of 16 degrees but because this dotted line and the ground are parallel to each other that means inside the triangle is also 16 degrees the person is directly above the point A which means that's a right angle the bridge itself is 30 meters high whenever I start dealing with numbers I just want to double check make sure that I'm dealing with the same units which I am otherwise I'd convert them okay so now I have an angle and a side length and so that actually is going to be something I can make use of because um, this side length AB remember that this one is looking directly from above so technically this is the point P but it's also the point A 
technically from above this is the point Q but it also looks like the point C. So if I can find this distance AB then that allows me to come over here and say something about this triangle. So that's something to keep in mind. And let's do one other one from the side. So you can see that this this problem has a lot of challenges in just getting set up. And so this is going to be my third triangle, which is I'm looking from the other side of the water. And I'm going to be looking at this triangle, which has the base of the bridge C, the boat at B, and above the point C is the person at Q. That person is looking down at the boat at some angle theta. We don't know that. Inside this triangle, let's make this a little less terrible looking. Inside this triangle, because this line is parallel to this line, this is also theta. This height is 30 meters, but theta is one of the things we want to know. Okay, so let's figure out what we, what we need. All right, so we need, in order to figure out the angle theta, we would need um, probably another side in this triangle. So can we relate a side in this triangle to anything else? Well, we can. We can relate this side BC to this side BC. So we need that. Okay, in order to find the length of this side in this triangle, we already have one side here. If we had another side, we could use the Pythagorean theorem. Can we get this side, PB? But don't forget, this side is also AB. So can we get this? Yes, we can get this. We can get this from over here. Because in this case, we have a side and an angle. So we're ready to go on this one, which will lead to here. Once we have that, it will give us this which will give us this, and once we do that, that will give us the angle theta, then we'll be done. And you can see why even just drawing those simple lines, there's, there's a lot we have to do here. But now that we're ready to do the math, it's not so bad. Okay, let's take a look at this first triangle. Now, I'm sorry about the ordering. I, did, I couldn't think of a better way to, to talk about this. So the first thing we're going to do is calculation number two. So calculation number two, for the angle 16 degrees, this is the adjacent. This is the opposite. So it's opposite and adjacent, so that's tangent. So the tan of 16 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is 30, over the adjacent, which is, I'm just going to call it AB. I don't want AB in the denominator, I want it in the numerator. So one easy way I could do that is I could just flip the fractions. I get 1 over tan 16 degrees equals AB over 30. This only works when you have a fraction or a whole number equal to a fraction. Remember that this is the same as tan 16 degrees over 1. And so now with some cross multiplication, which is probably what I would have done naturally myself, I end up with AB tan 16 degrees equals 30 times 1, which I'm just going to write as 30. AB is equal to 30 divided by tan 16 degrees. This is another one of those cases. If you want to write this um, as a decimal, I would write it as a decimal with four decimal places. But you don't technically need that because this is an exact value. And that's usually what you want to be using for your calculations. Okay, so now that I found AB, I need to go all the way back up here. So now I have found this. And now I have to find 
BC. So I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So that gives me, so now we're on to calculation number one, which is that BC squared is equal to, it's going to be this number, 30 over tan 16 degrees, all squared, plus, and I believe the other side was 75, so 75 squared. So BC is equal to, it's equal to the square root of that whole thing. So BC is equal to, and now I'm going to, I'm going to calculate all of this and take the square root of it all in one step. I'm trying to minimize any rounding that I might introduce. So I'm going to start here. So I'm going to actually do 30 divided by the tan of 16 degrees, and that's equal to a value. And you know, since I actually just did it here, I might as well give you the rounded value. That's equal to 104.6224. But I'm still not using that. I'm using what's in my calculator. Then I'm going to square that answer. Um, do I have a squared button on this calculator? I thought I did. All right, I'll just do it to the power 2. Okay, plus 75 to the power 2 equals... So now I've got this thing is approximately 16570.8536. And then I take the square root of that answer, and I end up with BC is equal to 128. 128.7250. Seven, eight. Now I'm still keeping this in my calculator for now because I think I'm going to need it. Now we know what this length is. We know what this length is. We're trying to find this angle theta. That's opposite. That's adjacent, which means we're going to use tangent. So our last calculation is going to be that the tangent of theta is equal to, what was the opposite side? 30 meters. And the adjacent side is what we just calculated. So the opposite side was 30 meters. The adjacent side, I'm about to write a rounded value here, so I have to put approximate there, 128.7278. And so theta is equal to, I do this calculation, so 30 divided, my, divided by my previous answer, and then I take the inverse tangent of that answer, and I end up with theta is equal to 13 point. And since I'm done, this is only my final answer, 13.1 degrees. Now, it's never a bad idea to just go back and think about the situation. If you have a diagram, you can refer to it. This person looks out and down at an angle of 16 degrees. This person is further away. So when they look out and down, they don't have to look at quite the same angle. The further away you get, the angle will decrease. The closer you get, the angle would increase. So that seems like a pretty reasonable answer, which is usually the case. So therefore, the other person looks down at an angle of 13.1 degrees. Okay, each of those problems took a lot of time and effort. Yes, it did take more time and effort because I was trying to explain them as clearly as I could, but they are going to take you quite a bit of time to do. So keep that in mind and recognize that the key to this are those good diagrams. Okay?